I'm going to break this video up into two sections. First part of the video, I'll cover how I modeled, sliced, printed and painted this Saturn V rocket engine, and where you can download my STL file for yourself, should you want to print it. And for those who want to see things in more detail, at the end of the video, I'll show the process of removing the tree supports and how I painted the model. We all know it's not possible to please everyone, but hopefully this should satisfy most of you. On with the show. This little project started way back in September 2017. That's a full two months before I actually started my 3D printing channel, and the prime reason I started on YouTube with Print Very Good. At the time, I had been 3D modeling for around 20 years, starting in 1998 on Studio Max before quickly shifting to Lightwave in 1999. The thought of making my 3D models into real, tangible objects was quite appealing. And the more I researched 3D printing, the more I liked what I was seeing. I decided to model the Saturn V rocket engine as my first 3D printable model. I had no idea what was involved in making a 3D model 3D printable, what the modeling rules and restrictions were, or what makes a 3D model print successfully. But I wanted to learn, and the only way to do that was to start, and figure it out as I go. My original plan was to just make my 3D printable models available to the 3D printing community, but I was a bit conflicted. I didn't want to release my models only to have people come back complaining that they were complete turds to print. So I thought I'd contact Angus at Maker's Muse to see if he'd like to print my files as test prints when reviewing printers. I could get feedback on my prints and he would have unique models to use in his videos. Naively, it didn't occur to me that he probably receives multiple requests like this each day. But good-natured as he is, he kindly responded letting me know he would use the model if he had a project that came up and gave me some tips on ensuring the model was good to print. Grateful as I was, I figured it could take a while to get my model printed, so I put the project on hold. That was until two months later, when my wife came home and excitedly let me know LD had a 3D printer and filament in store and on sale. It was the Cocoon Create Model Maker. This little LD printer became my very first 3D printer. I made an unboxing video on that printer and my channel was born. It's now over two years later and I'm finally getting this thing printed. What's put me off over the years is the length of time it's going to take to print. I'm sure I've sliced it from time to time in the past but was always deterred by the print time. I always seem to have something more pressing to get out and only having one printer severely restricts what makes it to the print bed. With all that said, why the Saturn V rocket engine? Well for me, the Saturn V rocket engine holds great appeal. It was the rocket engine that first took astronauts to the moon, landing July 20, 1969. I was seven at the time, and very much into science fiction. On that day, for me, science fiction became science fact. And with today's push to get back out there amongst the stars, it only serves to remind me of the magnificent achievements of our past. I plan to create more models from that era, and will continue adding detail to this very model for another larger print down the road. Righto, I've got the Saturn V rocket engine print underway. Uh, according to Cura, it's going to take 31 well, it says one day and seven hours, so I'm, I'm assuming that's a 24 hour day, which makes it 31 hours plus uh, printing time. If that's the case, this is the longest print I've ever done, or will be the longest print I've ever done. Let's have a look how it's looking. I'm using tree supports for this print. I've used tree supports a couple of times before, uh, Cura's experimental tree support that is, and I found it was going to be the best solution for printing this model in one piece. I really didn't want to cut the model up into separate pieces and have to put it back together again. So I think it's going to work out well, but um, time will tell. As you can see here, my part has finished printing. It took about 40, about 40 hours in the end, I'd estimate. 
Um, Cura did say it was going to take 31, but 40 is the more accurate time. And um, this is what I've now got to deal with to try and remove all these tree supports. Buried under here somewhere is the, um, the model. And I've got to be really careful removing all this sort of stuff. I'm not sure how fused in that is to that. But uh, we'll see how we go. Right, so I'm going to be using two, two tools for this. Um, I'm going to try and do the whole thing with just these two. I'll use these to break away uh, these bigger pieces and this for the finer detail. And on the bottom you can see here the um, the tree support is actually only one layer thick, the walls, but it puts down this nice base for it to, to grip onto. So I had nothing peeling up or lifting off when it was printing, which is great. So at the, so far, I'm happy with the tree support system, the way it's worked on this model, but you know the proof's gonna be in the pudding as to can I take it off. Going to do a bit of a snip and tear on these major pieces where I'm confident that it's um, nothing's buried underneath. So I might grab a little pair of pliers so I can pull on those parts. I'm trying to work so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll do this for as long as I can, but if it gets too awkward, I might just um, keep going and come back and show you my progress. I don't know if you can see that, but that detail that it's held up in here is excellent. It's a little bolt hole. It's printed that quite nice, which is great. I can see here we've got an issue. That's that should be a pipe that goes through around here but there was no support underneath this so it's it's made a bit of a mess of that I'm sure I'm going to find more stuff under here this I broke this away a bit earlier this was attached and that's come away pretty easy let's see if we get what's under here once we remove this yeah see once I remove this um, this bed of filament here it's only one more thick, so that should... Oh, that was easy. That uh, came away from there pretty pretty easy. That whole piece was just to support a little bit of material in there. So that was a bit of a waste, really. I think that could have printed without that support. But at least it's, it's come away, all right? Good piece to break away. Now there are see so these these brackets here. There are two brackets in here the same way, so I've got to be really careful now. I'm coming up to those. I'm very careful here to don't grab something I shouldn't. It's just sitting in there. Yep. 
think that's it. All right. So that's printed very well, considering. The only part that's failed is this part in here. I think now that I've seen this printed, I might, I might see if I can split it up into more sections and do a larger print. But on the whole, I'm pretty happy with the way it's just come up. All right, well that's it. So that's the Saturn V rocket engine printed and um, supports removed. And this is printed with the tree support, experimental tree supports in Cura 4.4. So uh, I give them a big thumbs up in particular in the way it, it grows into the model and just touches where it needs to touch without bonding itself onto the surface of the model, which is, which is brilliant. So um, I'm very happy with that. It's, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Now that I've got the model cleaned up, it's time for painting. For paint, I like to use Matisse Flow Acrylic Paint and I restrict my colour palette to three colours plus black and white. I find I can mix any colour I need from these five paint colours. That's Mars Black, Titanium White, Matisse Red Light, Deep Yellow and Prussian Blue. My process is to start laying colour down. In this case, I was considering making the rocket engine a much lighter colour, starting with a lighter yellow base but in the end, changed my mind and went back to a darker, more aged look. Once I had a rusty looking base, I then rubbed some silver spray paint over the model with a paper towel. I didn't film that, but as you can see from this example video, the process is quite simple. The goal is to hit the raised features with silver, leaving the deeper recesses dark. Once that was done, I then went over the whole model again dabbing on some more rusty and dirty patches. So that's it. That's how and why I made my Saturn V rocket engine model. Don't forget you can download the STL file for this model from my Patreon site. The quick link is printverygood.com. Now I'm going to show a less edited version showing my slicing settings and more of the support removal as well as painting. If that's not for you, I'll see you in the next video. So as you can see here, I've, um, I've done some experimenting with trying to print this in one piece. I didn't really want to have to cut it up into small pieces. And I found that uh, rotating it to an angle of about 122 degrees, I was able to generate supports of, and using the experimental tree support from Cura, as you can see here, that this was the the best way to get good support on the pieces that were that the pieces that had overhangs without having too much support around the actual model i did try it standing up and it was just uh, support went everywhere and so when i was in blender i just laid it over to about 122 degrees as you can see here and i found this was a, a good compromise between an angle that required the least amount of support and the tree support in Cura, I think, is, is going to... This is a situation where this is, this is what the tree support is perfect for. You can have support, and I don't have to cut the model up. And I think it be, won't be too intrusive when it comes time to, to remove the support. The other thing I like about the tree support is it puts down a really nice base, just a one layer on the, on the print bed where the support is attached to. So I, can, I don't see it lifting up or peeling off or picking off because sometimes when you have supports you'll have um, a, a good block of support in one area but then a spindly little piece of support in another area which comes loose as the print's going along and at uh, 31 odd hours or one day and seven hours of print time I really don't want any of this support coming away which it has in the past 
So I think this is going to work really well. The, the support is really well uh, locked onto the bed. And it's, it's as you can see here, it's, it's not really that intrusive. It's leaving a lot of the model exposed. The, the, the model that doesn't need support is going to be quite clear. It's going to be intricate on those little fiddly pieces, uh, trying to get the support out of there. But I, the, the way it's looking, it sort of it tapers to a point where it's going to be touching those. So I think the support will be pretty good to get off, but time will tell. So I thought that's just a, a quick look at how I'm setting this model up for print. Now I've uploaded the print to Patreon for you guys to uh, download and print yourself. And I've uploaded it at 122 degrees, as you can see here. If you want to see the model rotated back to zero and you want a, a copy where it's at zero, let me know and I'll, I'll upload that for you as well. But if you want to print it in one piece, I think this is going to be the best way to do it. And now I'll show you the, um, the settings that I have for Cura. I'll just scroll through one section at a time and you can pause the screen as you like and just see what my settings are so you can match them up yourself if you're trying to print the same print in Cura. Right, so I'm going to be using two, two tools for this. i um, going to try and do the whole thing with just these two. I'll use these to break away uh, these bigger pieces and this for the finer detail. And on the bottom you can see here the, um, the tree support is actually only one layer thick, the walls, but it puts down this nice base for it to, to grip onto. So I had nothing peeling up or lifting off when it was printing, which is great. So at the, so far, I'm happy with the tree support system, the way it's worked on this model. But, you know, the proof's going to be in the pudding as to can I take it off. So let's just get get into it and, and see how we go. I'm going to do a bit of a snip and tear on these major pieces where I'm confident that it's um, nothing's buried underneath Gee, I might grab a little pair of pliers so I can pull on those parts these will also come in handy for gripping those bits. I'm trying to work so you can see what I'm doing and I'll do this for as long as I can but if it gets too awkward I might just um, keep going and come back and show you my progress. Gotta be super careful. I don't know if you can see that, but that detail that it's held up in here is excellent. It's a little bolt hole. It's printed that quite nice, which is great. I can see here we've got an issue. That's that should be a pipe that goes through around here, but there was no support underneath this, so it's it's made a bit of a mess of that. I'm sure, I'm going to find more stuff under here. This I broke this away a bit earlier. This was attached 
that's come away pretty easy. Let's see if we get what's under here once we do this. Yeah, see? Once I remove this, um, this bed of filament here, it's only one more thing, so that's, oh, that was easy. That uh, came away from there pretty, pretty easy. That whole piece was just to support a little bit of material in there. So that was a bit of a waste, really. I think that could have printed without that support. But at least it's, it's come away, all right? And you can see up in there, I don't know if you can see that. It's just a couple of little points there it was, it was touching on, that was it. Right. The rest comes away like that. That would be awesome, but I'm not holding my breath. doing this definitely wear safety glasses because little bits of um, filament go flying everywhere and just breaks off into tiny little particles like you can see that and that's if that splinters into your eye that's not going to be pleasant so definitely wear safety glasses when you're doing this work away at this a little bit at a time and work creep up to the areas where it's attached. This is a bit of a worry. These attachments here trying to pull away from the model. So you can see that that's, that's, that's not too well attached which is good. Just making sure I'm actually grabbing Seeing this printed and what I'm doing here to get rid of this support, it certainly makes a case for 3D printers that have dual extruders and one extruder can just be for soluble material. If I had a printer like that, then I could just print this in normal orientation 
don't have to worry about trying to find a perfect angle. Just print it straight up like this. Uh, let the slicing software place the support everywhere and then just let it uh, put in water and let the, the uh, support material dissolve away and hey presto there's your model. So that has certainly become more appealing a system like that now after doing this particular model. expecting this to have printed perfectly but uh, just curious to see how this actually how good it is or how how bad it is underneath this support whether it's it's usable or it doesn't look too bad it looks like that's it's held up that that line up there pretty nicely I'm just trying to peel the support away from the model. Also using pliers because you can cut yourself on this on these shards of filament so be careful with that. wondering what this model is this is the Saturn V rocket engine I modeled this is the engine that first took uh, people to the moon so it's um, in the Apollo project in the Apollo missions and uh, it's available on my patreon uh, site if you want to head over there and, and support me over there it's um, uh, patreon.com forward slash Paul Van Gans. Uh, I'll put a link up. 
and you can see it for yourself. So I've got this model up here plus, plus um, a few more and I'll be adding to that regularly so um, there will also will be free free models that I'll have up there as well so well worth heading, heading over and having a look and um, seeing what I've got going on over there. Actually I'm pretty happy with that. I was expecting a lot worse but that's, that's holding up quite nicely under the support. If the rest of the model goes this way I'll be, I'll be quite happy. I normally print these in grey uh, so you can see much better the actual detail but uh, the grey filament I've got which is Cocoon Create filament is uh, I'm not happy with this, this batch it's very brittle and it keeps breaking so I've switched to the black and it's just printed so much nicer in the black so I think it's just not a good batch of filament that, that I've got with the grey and lots of uh, under extrusion issues and I've changed nozzles, and, which did help a lot, but um, the I think the, the culprit is is the filament. This just wasn't a good batch of filament. an issue here, see here, um, the print orientation being like this, that's how to print it, as it's coming around and printing these, these edges it had, was leaving fine points and they started to curl up and rather than let the, the print sort of destruct itself, well, it was starting to catch on the actual uh, fan, the part cooler, so I just trimmed it off as I was printing and um, and it sort of saved the print, really. And I don't think it's going to be an issue. This I can sort of patch it up and fix that up, so that's okay. I, was, I just really wanted to get the print out, and was happy to sacrifice that that little area down there. Yeah, I've got a. I know there's this has um, geometry under here as parts. So I've got to be careful.
I can see that's a part of it there, so I have to start being careful here. I've printed this part with 30% infill, but I'm wondering now if I should have printed it at 100% solid just to give those, these sort of bits more strength, those parts there, but um, we'll see. Although these would be printed solid anyway because I had five wall thickness. It's just died, so not sure how long this one's going to last. Keep going while I've got light.
good in there. Pleased with that. So it's just the support, the tree support just touches onto the, the mesh, which is really good. There goes my second light. They're LED, uh, battery powered LEDs and uh, they last a little while but they were obviously a bit low. So I'll try and up my ISO. And we'll work like this. There are, so these, these brackets here, there are two brackets in here the same way, so you've got to be really careful now, coming up to those. As you can see, it makes quite a mess. So I'm going to be cleaning up little bits of PLA filament for the next few weeks probably. regularly checking for 
um, parts of the model that could be buried in this uh, tree support. with this tree support it's it's in there but it's not really bonded onto the uh, to the mesh which is really good but when I say mesh I mean model or part I'm used to 3d terms
that's that um, other support that I was talking about in here. considering just came away all right so yeah so I've lost this pipe here it's actually it came down around and it didn't have any support under there so that's a pity I'm really impressed with this tree support how it's uh, really hasn't bonded itself to the model. Like with with the uh, with the normal grid support, it really attaches itself sometimes to the to the model. But this tree support just sort of touches where it needs to touch, and then um, yeah, it's been really good. That's the only part where it's, it's where it's let me down. It's just here. Ever everywhere else looks great. something I shouldn't So that's printed very well, considering the only part that's failed is this part in here. I think now that I've seen this printed, I might, I might see if I can split it up into more sections and do a larger print. But on the whole, I'm pretty happy with the way it's just come up. So I'll clean up these little daggy bits in, in here. Um, I don't know if you can see those. Some little daggy bits in there. And um, I think I'll call that done. Alright, well that's it. 
So that's the Saturn V rocket engine printed and um, supports removed. Now this is printed with the tree support, experimental tree supports in Cura 4.4. So uh, I give them a big thumbs up in particular in the way it, it grows into the model and just touches where it needs to touch without bonding itself onto the surface of the model which is which is brilliant. So um, I'm very happy with that. It's, uh, it could have been a lot worse.